Hey Heart fans, Butch Hartman here, and today we're going to be drawing more YouTubers in fairly off nerd style. Butch does seem like a really nice guy, he just pisses me off some of the things that he does. I don't care if it's clickbait because it's Butch Hartman. Ugh. Ugh. Fuck me, Butch! You stay off your noob network shit and I'll do what I do, and I'll never have to acknowledge your existence again. Uh, I can explain. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation, happily standing next to a man that I've publicly shamed for years. Well, it's actually quite an interesting story. Let me tell you about it. Spoilers, I lied! That's right, back in January of this year, I went to visit the office of none other than Butch Hartman, creator of the Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom himself, and it only cost me $2,000. He's remained one of the few running gags on this channel, and for good reason too. See, back before 2018, my YouTube mainly consisted of Let's Play videos and Sonic discussions. But once I made my shift to more commentary style content, using whatever the hell this thing was as an avatar, one of the main people I had wanted to talk about was, of course, Butch Hartman. I remember a time on the internet where Butch Hartman was loved and respected, where I uploaded a video making fun of him and had folks dogpile on me, telling me that I had no right to criticize him, and that he was just a nice old man. At the time, I simply thought he clickbaited too much and tried too hard to integrate himself into the social media landscape, which only worked because of what he had made in the past. But as time went on, the perception of him started to shift. Around the time of the infamous Kickstarter for his own streaming service, Oaxis, Everybody sort of started to realize that Butch Hartman might be just a wee bit... COMPLETELY INSANE! It was an incredibly delusional endeavor. Not only because he thinks he can make enough content by himself to compete with the billion other streaming services out there, but also because he thought he could do so for only around $250,000. No fucking way. Things snowballed from here. People dragged up old interview clips where he made fun of the original Timmy Turner's voice actress's death in front of Tara Strong, jokingly accusing her of doing it. Doing great, and then she ended up passing away, and uh, I think Tara actually had something to do with that. And so <laughs> that's probably what that was probably your fault. Uh. No, that Kickstarter was revealed to have all along been to fund a specifically Christian streaming service to promote family values, which in and of itself wouldn't be a bad thing if he at the very least specified it in the original campaign. But no, and the only thing worse than that being the way he responded to the backlash. Well, yeah, here's the thing about the internet. What's great about the internet? Uh, well, first of all, it's very You're powerful. You're behind a keyboard. Yeah, you're a coward. And then he later got caught tracing one of his commissions, which aren't cheap, by the way. I would know because I bought one. You know what you could better spend that money on? All the amazing products over on Manscaped.com. This video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. You guys are sure to know Manscaped by now, with all their amazing men's grooming products, such as the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer. But did you also know that they now have a Performance Package 4.0? Not only does it have a weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant and crop reviver toner, but also the amazing performance boxer briefs. They also have their Shears 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. This kit includes stainless steel nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors. With the performance package, your boys will be ready to impress, but make sure you cover the rest. Once again, your balls. So be sure to go to Manscaped.com to get 20% off, plus free international shipping, and also be sure to check out their new Ultra Smooth Package. And thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. If you remember, that whole video was me detailing how I went to VidCon and met the man himself since he was a surprise guest. I even got him to draw me some sketches that will forever hang over my workspace. But when I wanted to know if he could draw me a sketch of my YouTube avatar, he directed me to his commission site where I could buy one for $200. Which I proceeded to do. Also, I'd like to fucking point out that Butch literally drew someone else's avatar for them that day for free, so like... I don't know. I wondered what happened to like, Oh, that's coming out pretty soon! Seeing the guy in person was of course very surreal. I, I felt satisfied. But, I don't know. I could never shake the feeling that it was just at a convention. It, it wasn't personal in any way. The guy was quite literally elevated on a stage above me, and when I ran into him on the grind floor later on, it was clear he had no interest in speaking to some random fan. But what you didn't realize, Butch, is that I'm more than just some random fan. I'm in fact, some persistent random fan. I need to find a way to get into his office. Hmm. An interview! That's perfect! If I could somehow convince Butch that I wanted to interview him, then he'd have to not only go out of his way to meet up with me in person, but also sit down and have a conversation with me, look me in the eyes, and acknowledge me directly. NOTICE ME! No. This was gonna be hard, though. Over the years, I've come to realize that Butch, as a matter of fact, very much so knows who I am, and more importantly, the videos I have made. 
back around 2019, I had a couple of reputable sources tell me that he had seen my original rant video on him from way back when, and proceeded to try and get it taken down from YouTube before being told that was a very bad idea. And since then, my many attempts to fuck with him have been near thwarted from him catching on. For example, one time when I was making a video on the live-action Fairly Odd Parents movie, starring the famous Drake Bell, I reached out to Butch on Cameo to answer some menial question about working on the movies. I don't even think I cared about the answer at the time, I had just learned what Cameo was and wanted to see if he'd actually respond there. And at first, he didn't. Yeah, initially he ignored the request, and so I tried a little experiment. I decided to send the exact same request again, but this time, I changed the signature at the bottom from Mark to Ryan. This'll cover my tracks. And what do you know, it fucking worked! Uh, I loved working on the Fairly Odd Parents live action movies, it was so much fun to turn you know, uh, Timmy Turner into a live person. And I think I drew a commission for you. Oh, <laughs> okay, maybe it didn't work and he was just sick of me requesting the cameo. I'm gonna have to try and be a little sneaky about this potential interview. I gotta cover my tracks and make sure he doesn't find out who I am. And so I'll go on his website, buttchartman.com, and email a request about a potential collaboration. Can you send us a link to your channel? Fuck. Um, sure. Here you go. I, uh, I didn't get a response. Things fell silent for the next year or so. I figured it was a lost cause considering how easily he could tie my channel to the video shitting on him. Which sucks! You make fun of a guy for, uh, one, two, three, six videos and suddenly he doesn't want to talk to you. What's up with that? That's when a new idea struck. What if I were to make an entirely new channel and reach out to Butch to make a collaboration on that? That way, by the time he found out it was me, it would be too late. Hmm. It's just crazy enough to work. But what would this new channel be? It'd have to be something separate from my main thing, so I'm not just doing the same videos on another channel. But also a style that fits having the excuse of needing guests. A podcast, so that's it! Me and twitter.com slash Veronica and Jelly are gonna start up a podcast, and our first guest is gonna be Butch fucking Hartman. Here comes the moment of truth. Veronica is gonna email Butch asking if we can come to his office for an interview, so they don't get suspicious by my profile picture anymore. After sending it though, we didn't initially get a response. Fuck, this isn't gonna work, what the hell were we thinking? One. Butch is definitely aware of how bad his reputation is. There's no way he'd agree to some random interview without thinking he was gonna be messed with in some way. Two. Does he even do interviews anymore? Hell, he doesn't even do his own podcast at this point. Not to mention he's almost completely abandoned his YouTube channel, focusing way more on TikTok now. And possibly the biggest dilemma. We don't have a fucking podcast! For some bizarre reason, we decided to email the guy before setting up anything related to it. What it's called, what the gimmick is, what other guests we've had. Why the fuck would he ever trust us? God damn it, we fucked up. Pack it in, boys. Mission field. Wait a minute, what? They fucking agreed to it. They're stupid. Thank God they're stupid. This is it. I'm actually gonna meet Butch Hartman in his office. This is gonna be amazing. And who cares if we don't have a podcast set up yet? The guy is busy, we've probably got a couple months to- oh, okay, once I've done this Friday, fuck. That would be fine and all, but there's just one issue. I'm in Ireland. I got home from my trip to California on Christmas Eve, and only two weeks later I've gotta go back? Only for you, Butch. And so I booked a flight that cost me over a thousand dollars, and headed back on my merry way to meet Butch Hartman. After a genuinely scarring interview with US Border Control, who for the life of them could not comprehend why I was coming back to America only after a couple weeks just to meet some random cartoon creator for an hour. That is no joke by the way, this guy was screaming in my face, I don't know what he thought I was coming here to do, I just wanted to meet the funny fairly man. But either way, I'm back in California. That gives me one day to go out and buy all of the equipment, some mics, a mixer, and if you couldn't tell from my videos, I'm no audio is. So I had a lot of trouble figuring this out, and ended up spending nearly a grand on all this stuff to make sure it came out at the best quality possible. The hour long drive up to Butch's office was a lot of fun, joking about all the possible ways we could fuck with him, bring up his drama, make fun of him, just completely roast the guy for an hour. But the closer we got to him, the more and more we got cold feet. I hadn't even considered the fact that I had met the guy before, and proceeded to make a video about said experience that got over a million views. What if he remembers what I look like? If we start messing with him, he'd tell us to get the fuck out, and I'd no longer be able to sit and have a chat with him. I mean, this video would be a lot less interesting if it were titled, How I Almost Interviewed Butch Hartman But Blew My Chance and Was Sent Home Sad and Defeated. Wouldn't it? Not to mention, right before we arrived, it was made clear that his wife was going to be there with him. <sighs> I can't mock a man in front of his wife. Well, Veronica, 
I guess we're gonna have to seriously interview Butch Hartman. Which isn't a problem for me, actually. As I've stated in many videos before, I respect this guy's early work a bunch. The early for early odd parents, Danny Phantom, he's had a hand in a bunch of amazing shows. I'm sure his staff are also to thank for that, but you can't be in denial and say that his shows would have come out the way they did if he had no involvement. So Veronica and I made a short list of questions we were genuinely curious about and wanted to ask him. Stuff about how he got into the industry, what his plans for the future are, and about specific moments in his career, like writing an episode of Jimmy Neutron and working on a pilot with Seth MacFarlane. As soon as we got through the doors, we were met with Butch and his wife, Juliana. And I gotta put all jokes aside and say they were very accommodating and kind. Before the interview, Butch showed us around his giant office, pointing out all the little collectibles and animation cells he's kept over the years. Like having the entire pencil storyboard sequence from the Danny Phantom intro framed on his wall. You could tell the guy was really proud of what he's made in the past and cares about it a lot. And from someone who clearly loves this show too, it was nice to see. After the interview, we talked for a bit as well. Veronica talked away, but I couldn't really engage much in conversation, as for a majority of my time there, I was terrified. I was waiting, waiting for the moment where we lock eyes and I could see the cogs turn in his head, realizing who I was. I could have sworn it was coming. Near the end, too, he asked to see our Twitter accounts, so uh, we had to get the fuck out of there. He gave us some signed posters, we said our goodbyes, and that was it. My two-year endeavor to interview Butch Hartman was over, and I was so focused on what could go wrong that I barely even processed it happened. Huh. Okay, so, for the interview, we set up various methods of recording to ensure we got the best quality possible. And by god am I glad we were able to salvage anything at all because this shit was a nightmare. Put a lab mic on Butch connected to a smartphone, he accidentally turned it off six seconds into the recording. The camera we used with a mic on the end turned off halfway through the episode for no reason. The only audio we were able to use in the end was this little microphone here, connected to my dinky laptop and brand new mixer. I knew it'd come in handy. And with that, there was only one thing left to do. Make the podcast. We settled on the name Meeting Halfway, considering I quite literally had to travel halfway across the world for it. We hired a guy named Matthew to make a logo and assets, which came out amazing. And Veronica even made this great little animated intro for us. It really came together well in a way I was proud of. Hmm. Maybe this format could work with other people who've inspired us over the years. It's worth a shot. Since then, we recorded an episode of the voice of Hugh Neutron, Mark DiCarlo. Although that audio came out like shit and we need to re-record it. And you interviewed Butch here, too? We interviewed no. him in his office yeah. in Calabasas. Um, it, was really, it was really interesting. We flew to Boston later to meet the author of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Jeff Kenny, where the audio also came out fucked. So the media is so like readily available now, to where like you don't have to wait for it to come on TV. So yeah. we were watching uh, a couple weeks back. We were watching some of the the really early SpongeBob episodes, and that we thankfully I managed to salvage that though, and it's now up on the channel. And we even meet a few with some of our friends, such as Kellen Goff and the Rat Opinion. I guess I have a podcast now. You should check it out. Episodes are released bi-weekly on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Music. We got some fun guests booked into record soon, such as Cebra Spark, Kid Icarus, John Fountain, Zach Heedle, and a lot more, so stick around. I'm really looking forward into seeing where this takes us. Seth MacFarlane, I hope. But what happened to Butch? Did he ever see the episode when it was released? Well... We emailed the episode to Butch for approval before we uploaded it, and Butch said he loved it and couldn't wait to see it go up. Veronica even kept in touch with him over on her own, just casually talking to him, which had me dumbfounded. But ever since the episode went up, Nothing. Zilch. We gave him the link when it went public, even asking to see if he wanted to do a follow-up collab at some point, where we all sit together and draw his characters from memory, but no response. The only time we've seen him acknowledge the podcast publicly was when he replied to somebody on Twitter saying they enjoyed it, where he stated, Had a very nice time. I hope you did, Butch. Again, I respect his work a lot, drama aside. I can only assume once it went up, he finally found my channel link associated with it, and was upset that he had been tricked. Tricked in quotes because we didn't even really fuck with him at all, we had a very pleasant conversation which you can see for yourself. Or maybe you saw the comments making fun of him. Who knows? And furthermore, where do I even go from here? Like, how do I top going to the guy's office? Going out to dinner with his family as a joke? Getting invited to his daughter's wedding as a gag? Marrying his daughter for the funny? I don't know. If I never get to talk to the guy again though, I'd still like to say I got pretty far for what started as a lame running gag, wouldn't you?